Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, the question here, I'm not going to read the mail, but the question is basically, hey, do you think people who are getting into manga right now are going to migrate ultimately to the Western comic industry? Meaning the theory is that uh, there's a lot of uh, kind of younger people reading manga, uh, which is patently untrue, by the way, but there's, there's, but uh, the untrue part is that it's, it skews younger uh, manga, if you actually, you know, buy Barnes and Noble's own website when they kind of, you know, give us some demographic information about uh, manga and kind of what's selling and so on, uh, we see that it's uh, it, it skews older, skews teen and twenties. It does not skew, uh, you know, all in, in younger audiences. And in fact, several manga titles are not banned, but they're, you know, it's, it's, it's not allowed for kids to buy them because they, they are, you know, rated mature or whatever it happens to be. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the question is, are the, are people going to migrate from manga to Western comics? And therefore, you know, hooray, this means that we're in for a golden era of comics in about five years or so, because these kids are going to grow up they're going to start moving their way into superheroes and, and you know, everything's going to double. The, the money's just going to just explode out of everywhere. Is that, is that what we're in for? Is that what's going to happen? Um, and I think some of this is generated from apparently uh, both Rich Johnston and Heidi McDonald have made comments lately going, you know, kind of claiming manga in a way of, of uh, you know, manga success is comic success. And, and uh, these people are, are our customers, too. Now, that kind of ignores the fact that both of those individuals in the past have uh, kind of crapped all over manga as being inferior and in and, and some kind of, you know, all the various problematic aspects to manga. And that's going to continue. I think as manga grows uh, more and more successful, you're going to see more and more articles around, you know, we need to talk about manga's boobs problem and, and all that kind of stuff uh, coming out in these articles. But be yeah, it as it may. I think that both made comments along, along, around these um, in these kind of weird Twitter wars that people get into, which is you're, you're fighting a you're fighting jelly. Basically, there's no point in getting in an argument with either of those two individuals because, you know, you'll say things like, hey, I need money. And somebody will come back going, hey, uh, but I thought the comic industry was doing great. And uh, they're like, it is doing great. And he goes, yeah, manga is doing great. It's like manga is part of this industry. And you get into these very circular arguments that go nowhere. And they are absolutely go nowhere arguments that, that have no value to, uh, to anyone. Uh, but regardless, by the way, uh, people have asked as well, like, why do people um, crap on Heidi McDonald? And I guess a couple channels um, are, really have gone at Heidi McDonald pretty aggressively lately. And the, the question is, why do people go at Heidi McDonald and give uh, Rich Johnston a pass? And uh, to that, I can say, I, I don't know uh, who's giving Rich a pass. And whoever's giving Rich a pass is uh, needs to take that pass back. <laughs> Like, I mean, I don't, I can't speak for anyone else. I can say definitively, uh, Rich is absolutely, uh, miles worse than Heidi, but, but that's, <laughs> I don't, I think in terms of kind of general ethics, uh, how many people have restraining orders against them. I mean, just got, the, the whole list of kind of stuff there. Um, I think Rich is absolutely the bigger scumbag, uh, than in, in that, in that contest. My big beef with Heidi really comes, I mean, cause at the end of the day, Heidi's playing to her audience, which are other creators inside comics that need, you know, stories and things that are basically glossing over the uncomfortable bits. And, you know, and, you know, I, but my big beef with, with Heidi is just kind of the hypocrisy of like, I'm standing up for the industry. I mean, not for, you know, pay or, you know, health or, uh, you know, uh, creator rights or any of that kind of stuff. But, uh, but I'm standing up for you. I'm standing up for you against Twitter trolls, the, the number one worst possible thing in all of comics, Twitter trolls, which is uh, truly the bane of existence. Not, not uh, short-term contracts, uh, deceptive practices with people, not, you know, uh, happily supporting Warren Ellis until it became convenient not to. Not those things, but, uh, but it trolls on Twitter. That's, that's the true enemy of all comics. Okay, sure. <laughs> it's always kind of ridiculous, but anyway, but manga to Western comics. So I don't think, first of all, if you are, um, if you are like a stock investor and this was a, uh, a, a, a bond or a, a stock, this is something basically you're going to put money into 
let's let's say it's property. You're buying property and you're hoping for a return on investment. Um, I would not buy buy manga with the belief that hey, just give it a couple years and all these uh, all these readers will move over to Western comics and everyone will benefit. I wouldn't take that bet. I think that's a uh, that's a bet that's unlikely to pay off. I don't think it's a given that uh, manga readership is going to translate to Western comics, and I say that for for a variety of reasons. Number one, the price point is so significantly different between the two, like radically different, that even if you have this magical moment where a manga reader says, "You know what? All right, screw it. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna dip my toe into uh, American superhero comics and start collecting them." The price hike you're talking about is like equivalent from it's it's like buying a bicycle and then buying a Tesla of of money you're going to outlay. A lot of people who are reading manga right now are reading through Viz, where you have six ninety nine Tonkaban style graphic novels, um, and it's not there's not five hundred of them being produced a month. You know, there's most manga readership are, are people are buying it in heavy quantities, but they're not buying. They're not like going into Barnes and Noble and picking up like 12 Tonka bonds a week. They're picking up one a month, maybe if there's that available. But a lot of manga readership is occurring on the digital app, which is what a dollar 99 a month for unlimited. That's the price point. If you start comparing that to collecting Western comics, and again, you could, you could, uh, you know, you could certainly go for Marvel Unlimited, DC Unlimited, and you can get to a similar price point. But, it, but remember, the argument is that people buying manga are going to suddenly flip and start buying floppies. That's what they want you to believe. But, you know, from a price point, that, that, that's absurd. That does not even remotely match. Number two, the storytelling is radically different. If you like manga, there's no guarantee that, you know, you're going to flip over and suddenly start liking Western comics because they're completely different in pacing, in story. In, uh, you know, the artist is consistently different uh, from floppy to floppy. It's, in manga, it tends to be the same. You have, a, a for lack of a better word, a house style that exists for a lot of manga titles. That does not translate to Western comics. They're not the same. Um, and, and just, I mean, there's just so many, just from the distribution, how these comics are collected. Remember, most people consuming manga in the West and driving up that money are buying you know, basically, you know, 12 issues at a time collected, like in a graphic novel format, for cheap. They're reading it that way. And you're saying that, uh, you know, at some point, people are going to magically going to just kind of flip over and start buying, you know, monthly 22 page floppies for, you know, the equivalent of 10x the cost that that's not going to work. You know, a year's worth of comics purchased in a you know small manga Tonkaban type deal for Again, six ninety nine. You go to a Barnes and Noble. You go to a Target. And you're getting twenty five percent off that. Um, you know, getting getting at that price versus three ninety nine a month for a year. I mean, that's you know basically forty eight dollars plus tax. That that's forty dollars plus tax versus like seven dollars for the same volume, and one you get to read all at once, and the other you're going to slowly buy a piece at a time over a year. It, it's just, they're not equivalent. So that doesn't mean like, Hey, Western comics are dying. Manga, manga is the only thing that's going to survive at all. It's saying that the audience for one does not naturally just translate over to the other. It's, it's highly unlikely that it will. I mean, that it just, it, and there's been no evidence that it has. So the other thing people like to kind of conveniently ignore is that manga, it's, th th we're not at the, the beginning of the manga boom. This has been happening pre-COVID. So manga was gaining a lot of traction back in 2018. You might go, oh, that wasn't so long ago. That is four years ago. So in four years' time, that's enough to see a migration or see some business patterns starting to develop. We're not seeing those. You are not seeing Western comics, floppy comics, rise in accordance with with uh, how manga is growing. You're not seeing that, that transfer. So, you know, the, it, just the, the reality is that it's, it's not occurring like people say. So when you hear that argument of like, hey, you know, this is good news. You know, manga, manga sales will lead to Western comic sales. You know, the question to ask is how? How exactly? 
Uh, what what is the proof? We're just making an assumption that you know, and and I I hate the uh, the argument, and this is one that, in fairness, Heidi has has pulled out, which is, well, manga is for little kids, and then Western comics is for grownups. You start, you know, you get into like silly little superhero things in manga, silly little like, oh, you know, there it's just some you know demon slayer where uh, you know these these demons are ripping apart and eating human bodies, and you have to chop them up into little bits, and the little sisters a uh, you know, monstrous demon, you know, who's, and, and, you know, you've got characters being torn apart and everything else. That's for little kids. And then they'll grow up, you know, they'll get a little older and they'll start reading, you know, more mature titles like, you know, Miss Marvel. What? That That's not how it works. Oh, no, no, they're, they're going to read the multiversal adventures of the Avengers. You know, they're, don't worry, they're going to read, uh, you know, <laughs> Teen Justice. Um, they're going to read, uh, you know, this, this, these stories that, uh, basically say that the nineties were a bunch of sexist shit and, uh, you know, they're, they're having to fight the, uh, you know, the, the son of Mitzelplik. And, uh, that's, that's what people are going to mature into. You know, on one hand you get a comic, you, you get a manga over here where, uh, you know, a guy is, uh, fuses his body with a chainsaw demon bear dog thing, uh, not bear dog, you know, it, it basically a monster. <laughs> and then he rips up the mob or, uh, you know, you're going to do this thing over here where, uh, you know, it, it just, it just, it, it, look, it's absurd on its level. You know, yes, younger kids do read manga, but it's, it's primarily for older people, for older kids, for, for teens and older. That's who's reading it. That's who's getting into it. That's where the money is coming from. And the idea that uh, one of these days they're just going to stop reading that and suddenly flip on over and and uh, I, I, you know <laughs> start reading you know a, a, a an issue of the X Men where it's kind of vaguely inferred off panel that uh, Wolverine, Cyclops, and Jean Grey are all fucking each other. That's uh, that's 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 maturity for you. Yeah, not not really. Anyway, uh, there you go. So no, I don't see a natural migration path. Now, could a could a smart publisher create one by cleverly, uh, you know, changing their distribution, their pricing, and their model to try and capture, you know, manga readership by producing something that is a, a nice gateway step from manga into something similar? Absolutely, companies could do that, and they should. Please do. Thanks for listening.